What is up my friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is where I discover new skills that help me on my personal journey of self-development as a full-time filmmaker. We're continuing our series on Rome and in this video, I wanna quickly run through three methods for processing notes in Rome. So processing notes in Rome is a big pain point for a lot of people, including myself. It's really easy to take a lot of notes and put them into your Rome system. But then the question is, what do you do once those notes are in there? How do you retain them? How do you apply those notes to your life or turn them into content? So. It's actually been really cool as this channel is growing. A couple of people have been interacting with me in the comments and asking about precisely this question. So this is for Dahlia and Bryce. I looked into this issue a little bit more because I have a very strong philosophy on this very topic that I do wanna share with you, but it's not just gonna be my personal approach. I researched two other methods as well that have worked a lot for other people on the internet and I will be testing those over the coming weeks. So I, I am willing to give this a shot and see if those methods outperform my own methods that I've been using ever since I started using this platform. So before we get into my own methods, here is the first one that I researched. It's called the Zettelkasten method and it's probably the most popular one out there. Thiago Forte talks about it a lot. A lot of other people um, have referenced it. Uh, it pops up in this book called How to Take Smart Notes. So it's really, really popular. It's arguably what the founders of Rome built the actual platform around. So it was a system that was invented in an analog way. It was pioneered by this guy called Konrad Gesner. Uh, this was in like the 1500s. So you've got this other guy who kind of like talks about it extensively in the 1700s. And basically it was this very elaborate archiving mechanism physically where they would take these little notes and move them from drawer to drawer in this massive wall of, of drawers to keep track of the stage of processing of that particular note. So how do you apply this to the digital world? It's a pretty simple process. Basically, stage one is you import all of your notes into Rome. So this would encompass highlights, this would encompass any kind of like stream of consciousness note taking from your daily notes section. And that's sort of the note creation element. Once those notes have all piled up, so you can do this processing once a day or once a week, you would then go in and turn those, uh, turn this content into reference notes. So that's stage number one, reference notes. Reference notes just is the actual note, the highlight with the place where it came from so that you have a way to associate it to the actual source. The next stage of that is you take all of your reference notes and you turn them into literature notes. So literature notes under the system is the second one. And literature notes are basically just summing up those notes in your own words. So now you've condensed the highlight into a very concise version of that note in your own words. So that's a literature note. Step number three is to turn those literature notes into permanent notes. So that's the most important step. You take a bunch of literature notes evolving around the same topic and you turn those into a summarized version of all of those literature notes, which becomes your permanent note. So you have a bunch of individual literature notes, you turn them into one concise permanent note that sums up the key points of all of those little individual notes in one Rome page. So those permanent notes then become your basis for content creation, or you can just go in once a week, once a month, and just kind of review those permanent notes for the sake of it. If you just want to retain a lot more information for your life in general, that's kind of a way to do it. So method number two that I found is actually the pillars, pipelines, and vault system that I borrowed from August Bradley. So if you're an avid user of Notion, chances are that you've come across August Bradley's videos on PPV. And I'm gonna to link to those below because they're really helpful. So this is great if you're migrating from Notion to Rome or you wanna use both in your system, which is what I do. So PPV basically involves taking all of your notes and strategically associating them either to a pillar, a pipeline, or a vault. Now you ask, what are those things? Even though people typically call it pillars, pipelines, and vaults, it's actually more useful, I find, to start with pipelines. Pipelines are basically your projects. So these are things that you're working on right now that are part of a pipeline leading into the future. So these are things that you iterate on over time uh, that need continuous input and that will eventually you know, result in an endpoint. So projects is kind of like the easiest way to sum, sum those up. So those can be very specific to your life. Um, so the first step of this system would be to actually come up with your pipelines. The things that you're working on right now or that you plan to work on in the near future or even in the far future, you can just, you know, put a little hashtag back burner on those projects. I usually do the active or back burner uh, system. That's a really easy way to distinguish. So once you set those pipelines, so th that can be, you know, very specific, like I want to do this video series. I want to, you know, make this documentary, this movie. I want to write 10 blog posts on this topic, very concrete things. Those can be your pipelines. 
pillars are the structures that kind of hold up those pipelines and that basically hold up your life operating system as a whole to borrow August Bradley's words. Pillars are kind of fundamental concepts and ventures that are important to your life right now. So for me, these are film, which covers my professional work in film, documentation, which covers my more casual work in YouTube videos. Then there's things like health, wealth, family, friends, relationship. These are the fundamental pillars that I want to strengthen in my life. You basically want to associate each and every note to either one of your pipelines, one of your pillars, or one of your vaults. And vaults are just storage systems. Vaults are basically your permanent notes from the Zettelkasten system. So that's just knowledge storage in a very concise way that you can consult uh, and strategically associate to any of your pillars or your pipelines whenever you need them. So vaults is pretty straightforward. So anything that's kind of just there as an evergreen note can be associated to vaults. So now the way I would actually set this up concretely is to have every note get tagged either as hashtag pillar, hashtag pipeline, or hashtag vaults, along with hashtag inbox for every single note that you take, All right? So that's relevant for highlights. It's relevant for anything that goes into your daily notes. So you'll have your inbox page in your shortcuts on the left-hand side. And then once a day, you would go into your inbox and tag each and every note in your inbox with one of your pillars, one of your pipelines, or one of your vaults. And you can do this directly if you have a really good overview and you only have a few pipelines and pillars and you really already know where one's gonna fit in, you can do it directly. So you can just use hashtags for specific pillars and, and specific pipelines and vaults in your life and you'll have those kind of ready to go. Alternatively, you can do it in a two-step process. So what you would do is just go through and say, oh, that's a pillar, that's a pipeline, that's a vault. And so then maybe you decided on a weekly basis, you actually start associating the uh, pillar tags, the pipeline tags to a specific pipeline underneath those things or to a specific pillar. So this is a little bit more hierarchical than the Settle Custom system. It works really well for Notion because Notion is kind of, I think, optimally built for that kind of system. So I've been using it in Notion a lot. I haven't used it in Rome yet, but I will also test it. And I'm gonna be making a video about that as well. So finally, my personal approach, which I call the just-in-time approach. I've said this before on this channel. I don't actively process my notes whatsoever. Um, in the sense that I don't go into Rome just for the sake of processing notes. I really trust in the fundamental structure of Rome and that through the associative nature of the network itself, the right notes will emerge in the right context. And I know a lot of people say that's not the case. I think there is a bit of a method to my madness in the sense that I really process notes when I need them for a specific piece of content creation. So this, it's important to mention that I don't go into my notes ever to retain stuff just for the sake of retaining. I take a very pragmatic approach to this where I say, the only notes that are worth retaining for me in the first place are the ones that I actively apply to some other element of my life, usually content creation. So my outlook might change on this because I'm, a, I'm in a very uh, output focused mode at the moment. But for now, I basically, will only process notes when they associate to a specific project, to a specific piece of content I'm creating. And the way I do this, and I've outlined this kind of in my Write Better Papers video, um, the way I do this is when I create a new piece of content, I'll come up with a couple of keywords that I know for a fact relate to this particular project. So that is my way of making sure that anything that's floating around my Rome graph that could in some interesting way relate to this particular topic I'm gonna write about or that I'm gonna create a video about, um, that's how I make sure that those key notes surrounding those topics emerge. And so I create separate notes for each of the keywords and I go into my unlinked references and I link anything that I find relevant to those particular topics. And so once all of those notes are there, I will apply hashtags to them because I'm already going through them actively. So why not apply the right hashtags to them to start strategically linking them to other notes as well. So hashtags in my case are pretty random. I'm not gonna lie. Like they, they are things like um, inspirational quotes or um, lesson learned or completed project, things like that, um, that, that are kind of random. I just kind of 
remember them or I come up with new ones. So if I create a new one that's very similar to uh, an existing one, it'll usually show my pop-up bar and then I'll decide whether I wanna create a new one and migrate all of my old notes to that new hashtag. Or if I just stick with the old one and just go for that one. And that is when I do the second part of processing, which is kind of important for this system. And that's actually just to break up longer blocks into shorter bullet points. That's really important because every so often when I'm writing, um, let's say a new script for a video or I'm doing some research, if I'm stuck, I'll just open the block embed function and I'll type in some words. And that's when existing blocks from around my graph will pop up. So it becomes really difficult if those blocks are massive. It's a lot easier if they're broken up into small and concise bullet points because it becomes super obvious which ones are the most relevant or not. And so those are the only two active pieces of processing I do. I come up with hashtags once something's emerged and I break it up into smaller blocks. I think the official slogan for Rome is a tool for networked thought. And so I really stand behind this. I, I think the fundamental structure of the platform is so powerful that it will feed you the notes that you need for a particular project or for a particular piece of content if you come up with the right keywords for that particular piece of content. And that is the sort of just-in-time approach that I really champion. The notes that are relevant for me to retain are the ones that emerge as part of a research process for something that I'm inherently passionate about. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't be researching it or I wouldn't be writing about it or I wouldn't be making a video about it. For sure, that means that a lot of relevant notes won't be retained as often or I won't look at them as often. But to me, looking at those notes, if they don't naturally emerge as part of a thing I'm working on, that's a just-in-case approach. And I don't like a just-in-case approach. I really like a just-in-time approach. There might be another project or a feature film I'm working on a year from now that is gonna to relate to all of those notes that I've never looked at because they never popped up as part of an existing project. And now suddenly they all will because they're still sitting there, right? So I think this process that I'm using is definitely very efficient because I don't put in hours just, just because. Um, that being said, I know a lot of people enjoy retaining notes just for the sake of it. So it's really, it's really down to your personal preference. One thing I will say is that while my approach is, I believe, effective, you gotta be comfortable with the messiness of it all. And that's actually something I'm actively training myself to do. I used to be very intense about keeping everything organized, like to a detrimental degree, where I would spend more time maintaining the system than it would actually save me time. And that is why I scaled back my work in Notion a lot, because I think it's really conducive to going down that rabbit hole. And instead I do a lot more of my work in Rome. Um, and in Rome, I'm really embracing this messiness. But like I said, I will be testing Settler Custom and PPV over the next two weeks and I'll be making a separate video for each and letting you know my finding and who knows, maybe I'll come out the other end saying, wow, Settler Custom is actually way more effective than my personal system. I hope some of you try this alongside me. Let me know your findings in the comments. I really enjoy having these conversations. Again, shout out to Dahlia and Bryce who uh, asked for this video. Bryce, I really enjoyed my conversation with you in the comments. Um, it's, it's amazing, that's why I'm making these videos. I really enjoy having these you know, conversations, debates, whatever you wanna call them. It's all about just finding better, more effective, more fun ways to keep track of our thoughts. And I think these findings always trickle over into other areas of life as well. So I'll be making videos on my side hustles for investing, on my work in film, on just new skills I'm developing as part of this creative business journey that I'm on. Um, really enjoy sharing these things with you. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, send this to a friend. Really helps my channel grow and I super appreciate you being here. Honestly it means the world to me and it's what makes these videos so much fun. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, I do have another channel with my collaborator James Roberts as well. It's called Sisyphus Brothers, right up there, I think. Sisyphus Brothers is where we create longer and more in-depth mini documentaries on topics around investment, filmmaking, life. There'll also be a bunch of challenges on there of how we try to make more money. So we're always looking for new skills to develop, new sources of revenue that we can create so that it basically just takes a lot of pressure away from our creative work. So if you're interested in this, please head on over and uh, give us a subscribe on there. It really helps us out a lot. The videos over on Sisyphus Brothers are a lot more work. Um, just from a premiere and after effects perspective. So sometimes if there's like a two week break in between my videos on this channel, it's because I'm working on something over at Sisyphus Brothers. So do check us out, really, really appreciate it. But for now, have a fantastic week. I hope you're all well and safe. Talk to you soon.